This is episode one of the restoration of the farm. And we're going to restore the tower inside and we're going to restore the building adjacent to the tower. Now, this farm has been classified as a monument already since 1979. And therefore, the government has particular interest in the historical value of this building. It's part of the heritage. And as such, we are limited to what we can do. We cannot remove very important aspects or artifacts out of the farm. But then again, over the years, the farm has been subject to so many changes. So we need to find out what we want to keep and what we don't want to keep. Now remember, when it's a monument, you're not allowed to change things or to fake things. So something that, was, that isn't there anymore, but you might know how it has been, you're not allowed to create again and create the illusion that it is original. So we're not going to do this. If you see this sign in front of a building, then you know that it's protected by the government and then you're no longer free to do whatever you want with the property. You have to respect the rules. It is protected because of its historical value and because of its environmental and landscape uh, properties. And therefore, you have to stick to the rules. And that's what we're going to do. But you can't stick to the rules if you don't know the history of the farm and if you don't know the rules of the protection organization. So let me take you first now through the history of the farm. Uh, so before you can really start, you need to dig down in history, have a bit of knowledge of history of your area, but also have a bit of knowledge of building materials that were used throughout these periods. And this is what we will do now. I will take you through a short tour on the history on this farm. And it took me quite some time to find all this out. In fact, I even had archaeological excavations here on the property uh, that helped me out in, in setting the history of this uh, building here. Because the farm got actually documented in an archaeological book. And the book really goes through all kind of uh, efforts they've done on the farm to identify its origin. Um, you can see pictures from the farm and, and you've seen it on the video as well. And they explain it actually how deep they have been digging inside the tower. So on the ground floor, they have been digging about five meters deep. So, so let me take you around on a short tour before we actually get into the tower on the top floor because that's where we're going to start the renovation. But first, some history. So just follow me. Now, as you can see, on the left side, we have some barns and an, an entrance gate. On the right hand side, you can see the top of the tower. And that's the tower will will work. And especially the roof has special interest and the top floor, because that's the first part we will renovate. And then you have the house adjacent to the tower on the left. That's the one we will also uh, renovate inside, but not in this episode. So this episode is all about preparation work and to see what we're going to keep and what we're going to do away with at the top floor of the tower. So the farm goes back as far as the year 900 and there's still some residues of a old tower. Now we have to be very careful when we say the farm goes back to the year 900 because it wasn't the farm at the time. You can see the tower in front of me and that tower was in those days a watchtower, a guard tower. The tower was positioned along the river the Schelde which is right in front of me. This is a view from upstairs through the windows from the tower and if you look very carefully you can see through the trees where the river is that's the old Skelda. Now of course there are some trees in the way but at the time the trees weren't there and they could actually have a good view over the river and they could see the other towers along the river so they could signal each other. And it, they had it in different locations. And whenever barges would come up the river towards the city of Odenard, which is downstream, um, they would signal each other from tower to tower with smoke and fire that the Vikings were coming or that danger was coming. So the city was warned and they could close the gates. Now that was the initial purpose of this tower. 
Now the tower didn't look at that time like it's looking now because that's over time it has been changed. But let's have a closer look uh, on where we still have the traces of the initial tower. And this is the foundation of the very old tower and it goes along this edge here and it dates back to the year 900. Um, archaeological teams have investigated on it and they confirmed that the age of this foundation is that old. Now of course over time people have erected a new tower on it, so you can see the new brickwork that came up afterwards and the big um, blocks of stone that they put on the edges to fortify the tower. So this is a bit how the tower must have looked like in the years 900 and, and, and earlier than that. Not with this kind of brickwork, work, but you know it had no windows because it was really a defensive tower. Now after the years 900, uh, up to the years 1500, um, farmers would start living around uh, the tower and they started to use the tower as a refugee in, terms of, in, ter in times of turmoil and trouble. Uh, they would flee out of their little houses and they all would come to the tower and find uh, coverage and, and safety nests inside the tower. They would barricade the door and nobody could come in. And you actually can see that on these big stones on the edges uh, that is really fortifying the building. So the tower at that time was freestanding. There was no house on the right or no house on the left. There was a really freestanding tower. But by late 1400, the property was acquired by the family of the Heeren van der Meeren and they decided to change the tower from its defensive purpose into a living tower and that's what they've done. They put windows in but they also put an annex up. They put the house up here on the right and that's the house that was added to the tower. It's actually glued or stuck to the tower. On the left hand side we also have a house but that house uh, was similar to this one. However, it got destroyed during the First World War by the German artillery and it was rebuilt in 1922 and that's why it has a different shape. Now when I bought the property, I wanted to change it but I was not allowed to change it because of the regulations because historical buildings are historical buildings and they want to show you the history and of course the history is early 1400 all the way till today and that's a 1922 result and this is a uh, 1400 result and that's why I had to keep it as is. Now you may notice the pink color and that's very interesting because when the Heeren van der Meeren bought this farm and one of their sons which was a knight lived on the farm they all had a very specific color and all their property that they had all the houses of the farmers they were all painted in their own colors now the knight that owned this farm the knight that owned a lot of little houses around this facility um, was a bit awkward I think because he selected pink as his color and that's why I still have to paint the farm pink today it is what it is Anyhow, um, so during that period, um, this knight had lots of land and he would give out the land in loan to some landlords. And these landlords on his turn would then give the land to peasants to work on. And the peasants would work on the land and at the end of the year they had to bring their dues to the landlord. And then the landlord collected part of the dues, kept it for himself, and then the other part of the dues he would then go back to the knight or the lord and pay the lord uh, his contribution. So at the end of the day it was the poor peasant that paid everything. Not much different than today I would say. So that was that period. Now of course that didn't last and there was a very strong bonding between church, religion and state and that was a big issue and I'll come back to this in a minute because I have some traces of those events. And by the early 1700s, uh, things were changed and the property was no longer the property of the Heeren van der Meeren, but now is property of Landrieu, the family of Landrieu, a very rich family, a family of lords as well. And they kind of converted the farm, no longer being like a kind of a castle, small castle for a knight, because that did no longer exist. It was now kind of a castle farm and they started to erect buildings all around the farm and created a courtyard and let me show you that. 
So on the right hand side you actually have the old house from 1616, the tower in the middle that was freestanding all the way in the beginning, then the house next to that is the house from 1922 that was uh, rebuilt after the First World War, after the Germans uh, shot it to pieces. And then you see a lot of barns all around the courtyard and those barns were all rebuilt and reconstructed in 1922 because they were all badly damaged during the First World War. Now, um, it's a fairly big courtyard and it's quite uncommon for this kind of area where I'm living in because this kind of a courtyard you would typically find in Wallonia but not in the Flemish part of the country. So it's a bit exceptional but it had a purpose. Right? It, it defends the property very well. So it's all around closed with walls. So, uh, and actually the barns on the outside have no windows. So all windows and doors are at the inside of the courtyard. Very typical. But a very interesting building is the building to my right, which is the gate, and I'm going to show you the gatehouse. So this, my friends, is the entrance gate of the farm, and it's a remarkable building. Again, you will find the big rocks here, the big stones, and they had a purpose. Uh, uh, only on this level, they doesn't go up any higher, because this was to protect the wall against the wagons, the farm wagons that were rolling with horses, and they sometimes would hit the sides, and that's why you have these big stones here. But remarkably enough, if you look on the top, you see an insert on the left and an insert on the right. And on the left it says Anno, which means year. And on the right it says 1734. Now that's the time when this was erected when the Londrius rebuilt the farm or renovated the farm. It's very well corroded, but in the middle you see a blank medallion. And that medallion in the middle is blank for a purpose because there was a real medallion in it with the shield of the family. However, uh, it's been destroyed during the French Revolution because then the peasants were so upset and they destroyed everything that resembled landlords or lords or dukes or even clerics. Everything was destroyed, or at least that's what they tried because that was Napoleon's intent to separate church and state. So I think this is now enough. We know a lot about the history of the farm, but there's one more thing we're going to look at because that's a very interesting part because we will start the renovation in the tower at the upper floor and I want to pay special attention to the roof because that has a little story on it as well. So we are back at the courtyard and look at the top of the tower. Uh, you see this little pin on top of it. That's something we placed on later. But that roof is no longer the original roof because the original roof had a pear-shaped uh, top on it. And I have a, a postcard from 1908 of that one so I know how it looked like. So this is an old postcard from 1908 talking about the tower. Uh, as you can see this tower and you've seen it on the video and on the top you've got the pear formed um, object on it and that's the part which is missing. And strangely enough, the castle of the Heeren van der Meeren, which is located in Kersotem, has still these pear-shaped tops on the roof. So the night when he came over here, they put that roof up identical to the castle where his parents were living. But that unfortunately, that pear-shaped roof has been shot into pieces by our dear Germans during the First World War. And after the First World War, there wasn't enough money available from the government to pay for all the war damage uh, that occurred to all the buildings. Although the family Landrieu had put in all the claims to get the money from the government, they never got it from the government. So they got a limited amount, so they restored the priority, which was the barn, which was the farm, so the farm could, could operate again. And that's why the current tower is now missing its little pier. A lot of people are asking me why I didn't fill up the holes. These holes in the wall are residues from the First World War because this farm suffered real hard and you know these are the residues of bullets that were hitting the wall and so on. So I did not want to fill that up. To me that's part of history and it's a bit all over the place and you can actually see all the shots that were fired. So when the tower was converted to a living tower, they attached this house to it, where I'm standing in now. And 
At that time, uh, it was the period of the stucco period, and you can see it on this chimney. It was quite normal to have ornamental chimneys in your living room, and that actually was a sign of being rich. And you can actually tell the stucco uh, period on these, yeah, I would say, plaster inlays uh, on walls and chimneys. They also enlarged the windows uh, with divisions in it, uh, which is quite interesting because these windows uh, were typical for that period uh, around 16, 1700. Now before that, um, the farm existed as well. And it seems like, but it's hard to trace back when the conversion took place, that there are some older windows here. So I think what happened is that around 1616, and that's how far I could trace back this building, um, that there were smaller windows inside, not the bigger ones, and those were probably put in when the family laundry got the facility and they renovated the place. Because I have other windows here that are appear to be a lot older and are more like 1400, 1500. And uh, let me show you one on how that looks like. So this window is in the same room as the bigger windows I just showed you, and the same room as the stucco uh, chimney, but. You know, it's quite different. They are really block windows and you can see these big blocks of oak that are here. And then on the top of it, you have metal bars on the outside, very heavy metal bars. So that is very typical for a very specific period. So you're probably going to wonder, when is this guy going to start renovating? I mean, he's been talking so long about the history, but people are... Um, Believe me, history is so important uh, if you do renovation of an old building. You just can't rush in and tore everything out. You have to be very careful and keep all the old artifacts. Anyhow, right now we're on the attic uh, or the first floor in the old house uh, and it's not been renovated at all. But this was the place that gave access to the tower and that's where we will work. And this house gives access to the tower. Now access to the tower and more specifically the second floor in the tower wasn't always through this area. It used to be for some time at the inside of the tower, especially when it was a safe haven for the peasants that were living around the tower. They would get in the tower and they could get to the top floor as well uh, with a staircase that was built at the inside. Now that has been removed, but I can still show you where it has been. Now there used to be a staircase uh, which was leading up along the wall here and going up all the way uh, into the opening in the ceiling. That staircase has been removed because it was totally rotten. So if you look very closely, uh, you can see that in the top left corner in the ceiling there is this opening. Now you might notice that the motif on the ceiling is along the same lines as the stucco chimney that we looked at. Now access to the tower is believed to be from here into the tower and there's quite some evidence that this was the case. So let me show you that. Access to the tower must have been through a staircase that was located here. But it's no longer here, so eventually I will replace this with a steel uh, construction or a steel uh, um, staircase. Now here, that was the old entrance and you can really see it because we still have the wooden steps and the tiles and the doorway, it's quite obvious. And on the top, we have a medallion, a medallion which is coming from the same stucco period as the chimney downstairs. So we know that this entrance to the tower must have been built around 1700. And that's exactly what I wanted to know. So this will be the staircase or the opening or the access point into the tower by the time I'm done. So now let's have a look inside here on how things look like. So here we are, the top floor, uh, the room isn't that big, uh, it's 5 by 5 meters and this is the second floor in the tower. The walls are 1 meter thick of the, of the tower as I said before and as you can see there's a lot of work here. Uh, there's work on the floor but we come back to that in a minute. But this was the entrance I was referring to, this is what we're going to preserve. 
the windows, uh, while those are being put in in 1922, you can see that on how they are constructed, so they will have to go, but already have the new windows built, but they will have the same kind of partitioning and dimensioning, we're not going to change that. You can also see that for some awkward reason they kind of blocked off the windows in the top. Uh, so that's also late 1920, something like that. The floor is the interesting part because the floor is uh, an original floor, uh, probably around 1616 when they initially did the work, but it's a bit hard to tell. Now the floor itself are these little clay tiles, very small little clay tiles actually very soft and they were built locally. Um, they dig up clay along the river and they put it in a mold, turned over the mold and then they ditched it all in a big pit in the ground, put a lot of hay and wood and straw on it, put fire to it, let it burn and then when it was really burning and there were a lot of ashes around all the uh, tiles, then they filled up the dirt, the hole with dirt, so it was like kind of an oven and they let it sit for a few weeks actually and then they digged it all up and the, the clay tiles were actually baked. Uh, there's two types of tiles, red ones and black ones as we call them. This is just a different type of clay they use. So this is quite interesting that they were producing that really locally. The same thing was true for a lot of the bricks they have used in this uh, building. So. Um, Windows we know, the, the floor we will uh, keep. Now the other interesting thing is the ceiling. Uh, let me show you that a bit closer. So the other area of interest is the ceiling. Uh, the ceiling seems to be not the right height. But, and you also see these moldings on it. And the moldings that you see on it, they are not probably not really plaster. Um, it looks like the whole ceiling has been put in afterwards probably after it was destroyed by the German artillery in the First World War. So now um, that whole ceiling probably will have to go out, but I don't know what's above it. So let's check that out, what we have on the attic, and then try to identify if this ceiling is worthwhile keeping it, or if we need to expose the ceiling that might be above it. Let's have a look. So now uh, let's have a look on the attic and see what we have there. The problem is that we have no access to the attic. Everything is closed up with this ceiling. So there's no way on how we can get in. So I already made a hole in the ceiling just to have a look what's there and to identify if this was the original ceiling or not. We are now on the attic uh, underneath the roof of the tower where we used to have the actual here on top of the roof and it is quite interesting to see that the actual structure where the pier was on at the time is still here. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight strong oak pillars that are still here cross-connected. So this is certainly something we want to keep. That is too much of heritage and uh, this has been around here at least for three, four hundred years. So we'll clean all this up and then we keep it uh, in position. And just look how this is built. I mean, all these crosses are joined together with square nails and they are worked in on the sides. And this is just to reinforce these pillars and this must have been all around. There's another one over here and it's like pieces of trees that they cut. So it doesn't even look like machine cut if you ask me. They must have had a lot of work on this to build this. And it's all around. So now let's have a look on the floor, how that is, because we are really here to check out the um, the ceiling uh, that we, the ceiling of the room below, if this was the real ceiling or not. So let's check that out. This is exactly what I expected to find. Um, old oak beams, uh, big beams, uh, which we call mother beams, and then smaller child beams that fit in there to make kind of a matrix or a roster. I'm missing one here and one here, but the rest is all in. And I noticed in the other areas it's the same thing. So I'm quite happy with this structure because that is the original 1616 uh, structure which is really really nice and still very well preserved so yeah this is good so I'm gonna use this and I'm gonna clean it all up and 
have it exposed because that is really, really heritage. Uh, the roof itself, that ain't much, is it? I mean, this is just ordinary wood, not even very strong. It's not insulated. I know it's already having some uh, board uh, underneath it uh, to protect it from the rain. Um, and that's certainly something uh, I will have to reinforce. I will put some extra wood up the sides along the wall. We'll build up like this and then we insulate it and then we put plasterboard up. So we have a nice white uh, ceiling because there is no value to any of this wood here. Uh, this is just ordinary construction wood. Uh, that they've done when they rebuilt the tower or the roof of the tower in 1922. But this I love. So now let's have a look what they've done with the ceiling which is over there and, and how that must have been. All right. So we know so far that we got lovely great old oak beams that formed the previous or the initial ceiling where the wooden planks must have been on here as a platform to walk on the attic. And then uh, the underside was seen from the room below. But then we have these things here and those look like pine beams or rafters being put in probably around 1922 because when they rebuilt it and they put this uh, typical plaster ceiling up which consists of little pieces of wood like this and they nail it on these rafters one after the other and you can see this all over here and and you see it's it's very soft yeah so here you see all these um, thin pieces of wood. It must have been one hell of a job to nail it all on these rafters on the bottom side of course and then put the clay up and this is actually the clay. This is the clay we're talking about and you can actually see in the clay they have some straw in it. Yeah, you see this straw and, and little pieces of other wood and this was done to make it stronger. Uh, sometimes they put even human hair in or horse hair. That's what they used to do and it makes it a bit stronger but as you can see it's still very easy to, to break. And then when they were putting it on it came through all the gaps in between uh, these little lats. And it came through like all these little things you see here and that's how it curled over and it's kept in place. And then at the end they, they put some very fine white plaster on it. So all that stuff We'll have to go. We'll take all this out and then we'll take these uh, rafters out and then we can expose the nice old oak ceiling. So I'm very happy so far what we found. I know now the work plan. Um, I'm not going to take the ceiling out right away. First we take the floor out in the room below with the old clay tiles so I don't break any. We'll pour some concrete and then we'll remove this um, uh, ceiling, the old ceiling, this one, and then we have the oak beams exposed, we clean them all up, we protect them against insects, and then we'll have to work a bit on the roofs, uh, the roofs will be easy to, to fix, that will, um, as I said already, we'll insulate it, we strengthen it, and then uh, we'll put drywall up on the side, and this will be really lovely, but I am really impressed about the structure where the pier was on, this is really that intrigues me. So I'm going to show it you one last time before I shut down this video. This is, this is really amazing. This, this whole structure I really love and yeah, I haven't seen it too often and of course I haven't been in a lot of fancy buildings but this is nice to find it on the farm. And I think this will be the jewel of the room.